Hey everybody, Rich with PCC. Hey, I want to talk to you today about soft starters. Uh, I know we talk a lot usually about drives and, and, and across the line contactors and uh, I think sometimes soft starts get a little bit left behind in the conversation but they absolutely have a, a great place uh, when, it, when it comes to uh, specific applications and, and getting uh, motors properly started efficiently uh, out in the field. So what I have for you here today is the uh, the Siemens 3RW5 line of soft starters. It is a, uh, it's a reasonably new line. It's been out for probably a couple few years now. Uh, there's uh, two main variants of this soft start. Uh, on, on, the, uh, on your left side here you have the 3RW52. On the right side uh, the 3RW55. I'll talk a little bit about those differences. So first of all, the 3RW52, uh, up to 400 horsepower. Uh, we typically think of this guy to be used on your, um, your, your, your lower demanding applications. So you think about pumping, we think about conveyance, things like that that don't have a, a lot of starts per hour, uh, don't have a lot of current needs to get the motor up and running. Uh, so we think about those, those, those variable torque or low end constant torque types of applications. Uh, we can always tell a 3RW52 from a 55 because the parameterization is done via a set of dials so it makes it really easy to implement uh, so when you install this thing it's power in power out to your motor uh, your control voltage wired into the into the soft start uh, and then it's simply a, a set of six dials to set up uh, your your overload settings your, your starting times things like that your overload type um, and then you're ready to go and, and the 3RW52 is, is set to go. So, uh, so I like to look at the 3RW52 as, as, a, as kind of the, the, the lower end device, but four three phase applications, uh, easy to set up uh, with, with the dials. Uh, on, the, on the right side here, we have the 3RW55. Uh, this guy I would call a more full-featured uh, soft starter, a lot more capabilities with regards to the types of applications that it starts. So I start to think of the higher-end applications like potentially uh, higher demands like crushers. I think about things where you have that, that maybe that class 30 overload setting. Uh, so, so we like to think about this guy uh, for the higher-end applications, but also maybe if you need some of, the, some of just the higher-end configuration capabilities as well. And so if you notice when I open the front door of this guy, I don't have the dials. We actually do all of our configuring for this guy through uh, the HMI or potentially through a, a piece of programming software. Uh, this guy also goes up in horsepower. So where I talked about the 52 goes up to 400 horsepower, the 3RW55 will go up to 1000 horsepower. Uh, the 3RW55 also is offered in a safety variant so that you can, you can do safety shutdown. I don't typically see that in the market and I, I, I want to say that even Siemens might be the only uh, manufacturer in the market today that has a safety shutdown uh, for a soft starter application. And so I, whenever I bring up safety I get asked the question of okay well what, what category, what performance level, uh, what sill level are we talking about. So the, the 3RW55 fail safe variant uh, it would be a sill one or performance level C shutdown as a standalone unit. So simply by the, uh, the wired terminals, uh, you could shut down for a, a performance level C type application. If you needed to get to performance level E or SIL 3, then we would put a contactor in line with the soft starter to, to achieve that rating. But again, I think that's a little bit of a, of a unique uh, function and feature when it comes to the, the soft starter industry. One other interesting feature on the uh, 55 level soft start is its auto configuration capability. Abilities. Uh, so when we think of somebody that might be new to uh, a soft starter, maybe doesn't know all the parameters and, and understand everything that's involved with uh, with getting these guys set up, uh, the auto configure uh, functionality uh, that, that's embedded into the 55 can be very helpful. So you know you're essentially at a situation where you're just basically giving it your your motor overload current and then maybe one or two other settings, and then you allow it to basically teach itself the application and allow it to start the motor. It takes a look at the characteristics and the starting times and voltage and current and draw and things like that and it, and it adjusts and tunes itself uh, to, to the application. Uh, another great uh, fit for that auto configure capability is it's constantly reviewing that starting process and so when you have a changing load situation, so when I think about uh, maybe conveyance applications where maybe you're dumping something onto a conveyor at varying loads uh, and, and maybe there's different starts and stop requirements for this guy you know, based on the day or the time that it's being operated, it can auto adjust itself and its settings uh, to that current load situation. So again, I, I I think about those situations where maybe we're dumping rock onto a conveyor or maybe we're in a, a rock crushing application where the load is varying at times when we, when we start it up. So uh, another great feature of the 55 soft start.
Something else that you might notice that's a little bit different between these two devices is the type of HMI that is on the front of it. So if I open both of these doors, you can see on the uh, 3RW55, I have a, a, uh, an advanced HMI, I have a color display, has a lot of information on the front of it so that I can see exactly what's going on from a phase voltage, phase current, I can, I can monitor a lot of things uh, from that HMI. Over on the 3RW52, I do have the basic HMI, uh, so it just gives me a simple readout. It might give me an error code or a status readout, but pretty simplistic type information. Uh, both of these HMIs can be uh, mounted to the, to the cutout on the front of the door of the enclosure. So you, as you can see here, uh, this guy pops out and then it has a ribbon cable that attaches it. So that ribbon cable can be longer and then we can get a, a door mounting kit so we can have this on the front of the panel while the soft start is mounted inside of the panel uh, where all the, uh, the power connectivity is at. Um, another interesting uh, difference between the basic and the advanced HMI is if I flip this little door down here, I have an ethernet connection on the front of it so that I can connect external software. So maybe I want that, that next level of diagnostics or I want some type of a software interface to be able to program this soft starter. Well, there's my connectivity uh, to get into the, the, the configuration right there. Now, one thing to be clear, even though I have two levels of soft starters, the 52 and the 55, either of them can have the advanced or the basic HMI. That's not specific to the type of soft start. One other uh, kind of advanced feature uh, for these guys uh, that they have as an optional add-on is a communications module. So here I happen to have the, the Profinet communications module. It would, uh, it would slide right in here. Slides right into this slot here, and I would push that in, and then now I have a, an Ethernet port here, and this happens to be my Profinet connection module, uh, also available for Ethernet IP, also available for Modbus RTU, available for Profibus, so a lot of connectivity uh, into these soft starts as well. Again, another thing that I typically see in the market when it comes to soft starts is typically they're hardwired controlled. Uh, they're not, wouldn't call them a smart device. In this case, these devices are, are absolutely uh, smart devices. Um, another question that I tend to get on soft starts is, you know, is it a true three-phase soft start? Uh, am, am I just, am I just uh, ramping up and down a couple of phases or am I actually a true three-phase? In both of these cases, we are talking about a true three-phase soft start and they also do have an internal bypass. So once that ramp up process is done, the internal bypass takes over and then that, that motor gets uh, basically across the line uh, connected voltage uh, through the soft start. So hopefully you see a few differences here from the soft start industry. Maybe you can save some money uh, when it comes to your solutions in the future. Maybe we can look at a soft start versus maybe a, a, a more expensive VFD type of solution. But give me a call. Let's talk about it. We can pick out the right solution at the right price point for you and uh, we'll get your motor started up the right way. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.